thanks very much. Welcome back. So, I was born in a British seaside town, which basically means it was my birthright to be a chav on benefits. <laughs> Only in a seaside town, and maybe South London, do you get convictions before you do qualifications. <laughs> But there's certain criteria you need to meet in order to be fully fledged into a chav crew. <laughs> One, you must learn how to look cool smoking a fag before you even know how to smoke it. <laughs> Two, you must be able to find money in your parents' house for booze even if nobody's willingly giving it to you. <laughs> Three, you must think it's embarrassing to be smart. Bonus points if you get kicked out from school or politely asked to leave, which was how I chose to see it. <laughs> Six, you must have... <laughs> you must have at least one teacher try and shag you, or you try and shag them. <laughs> My teacher told me if I'd misbehave, he'd spank me. To be honest, I've never wanted to misbehave more. <laughs> And 12, last, but definitely not least, you must come from a dysfunctional family. See, here I was all set because my family put the all in dysfunctional. <laughs> Accepted dysfunctions can include, but are not limited to, one absent parent, bonus points if it's your mum, because normally it's your dad. <laughs> one parent on benefits, one parent with an addiction problem, and at least one parent with a mental health condition. Bonus points if it's your dad, because normally it's your mum. <laughs> <laughs> you will also likely have at least one sibling that's got a different dad, that gets kicked out from school or runs away from home, that's got special needs that takes all the attention, <laughs> that gets pregnant before the 16 or goes to jail. Experience of incest or care system, bonus points. <laughs> so, my seaside town was in Kent. And it makes me laugh whenever I say I'm from Kent to anyone who's clearly never been to Kent, because it's always met with the same response. Oh, I hear it's really nice there, Garden of England. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if it's one of them gardens with an abandoned trolley, a mattress, and a couple of crackheads sleeping in it. <laughs> but there is a lot of greenery, though. You can pretty much buy a bag of weed on every corner. <laughs> so my uncle used to ring me up and tell me he was having a really good time because his gardening was going really well and the flowers were blossoming. Well, before I was old enough to know any better, I actually thought he was an avid gardener. It never occurred to me that he lived in a third floor flat that didn't even have a garden. And I just assumed that the spare tents in his, uh, up in his spare room were just for indoor camping. So recently, he got an inspection from his housing manager. And upon finding them tents, they swiftly rang the police. Now, I will add, this is the first time my uncle's been caught doing a grow since the 80s. That's either because he's very, very lucky or because he's very, very white. <laughs> but, fortunately for him, the doctors have him down as having mild dementia. So, this probably will be the only time you hear fortunate and dementia in a sentence. <laughs> so, as the police questioned him, in a quick thinking moment, which was pretty fucking genius, I might add, he said some bloke down a pub forced him to do it, but he couldn't remember who. <laughs> and they believed him. <laughs> so not only did he get away with it, they never confiscated none of his equipment or the weed. They just told him to throw it away. And then, uh, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then they rang up his doctors and said they were worried about him because they thought his dementia had got worse. <laughs> so anyway, his weed shop's back up and running. They've put the stuff down his mate Bob's house. And we're pretty sure it'll be all right down there because not only is he in his 80s, he's white too. <laughs> Thank you very much.